already got a public hearing going on, so they're coming. And, but I would like to engage with afterwards or before on the, uh, I want to introduce this gentleman here who wants to address it, who address this for yeah, sure. We, you can do it after. Oh, I think we'll do it after the public hearing. We'll do it after the public hearing. Frank, whatever you want to do. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Paragraph 274 of the state law and prescribed, and as prescribed in paragraph 116.50 BSPR of the Shandigan Town Code for the purpose of hearing the following application. Dean and Carol Pisano, owners of parcel located on Fawn Hill Road, Phoenicia, New York, 12464, indicated as section 24. Point one two block two lot three six point one zero zero zoned R three are seeking an area variance for a proposed building site. Due to the steepness of the property, the building site is limited. The current R three setback requirement is sixty feet. The fifteen foot area variance proposed and requested would permit a front setback of forty five feet. The public hearing is scheduled for Wednesday, March 18th, 2014 in the Town Hall Building, 7209 Route 28, Shandikin, New York, at 7.30 p.m. prior to the regularly scheduled ZBA meeting. Anyone interested in this case is invited to attend this hearing. Communications and writing in relation thereto may be mailed to the board or presented at the above noted hearing by order of the Town of Shandikin Zoning Board of Appeals. Just with the 15 foot variance, I was requesting closer to the road. Uh, that could take a whole lot because of the steepness. Oh, yeah.
yard setback. Actually, front yard setback. Yeah. Okay, so you're making a motion to approve the proposed plan. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 of decision and get copies to the town clerk and to Mr. Pisano. Mr. Uh, Mr. Wellner, uh, very well known in this field, he wants to address this board. Is it W-E-L-L-N-E-R? W -E -L -L -N -E -R. And again, thank you for giving us the time to, to speak tonight. I know we weren't on the agenda, but um, I was recently retained by Mr. Higley by Hanover Farms in connection with the application that had been pending in front of the ZBA for the, um, for the Hanover Farms farm stand. Um, Mr. Higley gave me minutes from a meeting, I believe it was October of, uh, of last year, uh, and some other documentation, and, and really what, what, I, what we both came up here tonight for was just to address the board and see if, um, if we could have the matter placed back on the calendar and reopened. Um, there, there are a couple of things that, um, that weren't clear to me, and just in the spirit of cooperation, we wanted to come up here and just address the board and see if we could um, move those things forward and also just, uh, just clear them up. From what I saw in the meeting minutes, um, there was a public meeting that was open. It, it didn't look like the public meeting was actually closed on the matter, uh, and though it may not have been heard at, at if later I meeting. May, if I may interrupt you, um, the meeting minutes, just so that you know, are, you know, we don't do them as detailed as we used to because they are all video recorded now. 
Um, so for your own benefit, if you would like to view those, they are posted on YouTube a couple days after every meeting. And because this is, you know, because it's videotaped the way it is, there's a chance that something could have been missed in the minutes. So just because it's not in the minutes doesn't mean it didn't happen. Sure. Um, okay, so I just want to be clear on that. Okay, yeah, yeah. And, and it's good to know that they're available on YouTube. I'll, yes. I'll see if I can find those. Uh, and if you can't find them, I'm happy to, to um, get you a copy. Okay, I appreciate that. Sure. Um, it, it seemed like the other thing, just in reading through the minutes, um, when the Hanover Farms application was denied, what was listed as the reason for the denial was there was information that the DOT had been seeking, which uh, according to the discussion that day at the meeting, and I, I believe Mr. Higley wasn't here at that October 15th meeting, but there was discussion about material that hadn't been provided to the DOT, and from what I saw in the minutes, the, the application was denied because of information not being supplied to the DOT. I actually have correspondence from the DOT. That and also we had a letter, uh, which I still... From Mr. Corrigan. I, I still have some problems with, with that particular part of the letter, but there was also a county uh, injection there with, with the same request for information, which we didn't have. Okay. Uh, but what I would like to do is if, you know, if you wanted to get on the agenda, we can we can pull these minutes out and get everything in a file so that we can you know have, 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 have a legitimate discussion without trying to remember when and sure it. sure we and, and sir, I can certainly come back to the next meeting again we came tonight uh, just to see if we could get it restored to the calendar and also um, just to at least raise the issues and, and give the board some time to take a look at those and when we come back to the next meeting we can resolve them um, I have a letter from the the New York State DOT saying that, in, from what I understand here, in essence, the DOT was saying to the Zoning Board of Appeals that if that it was up to, the, this, to this board to decide whether it was going to grant a variance or not. Once that decision was made, if the board granted a variance, the DOT would accept that, and then it could proceed with its work. But the, 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 the DOT was waiting for you folks to act. From the minutes, at least, it seemed like the, the discussion on the board was that it was the other way around, that Mr. Higley owed some information to the DOT before well, anything that's more the, could be done. That's the, uh, that's the position that the county put us in. It wasn't, it wasn't our board necessarily, uh, although we, re we requested information, also realizing that the DOT says, if you grant the variance, and we'll do what we need to do. Right. But also, in the, in the meantime- yeah, I actually have the letter right here. We received, we received that letter stating that uh, we needed that additional information to be able to grant the variance. It was the uh, well. She has a letter there. It was. It was. It wasn't a recommendation. It was a requirement. And uh, and, and maybe that's um, where my understanding differs. Well, that's maybe what the, the it's in the last paragraph of Mr. Corrigan's letter, where he says, uh, "I will respond by stating that the department will agree with the determination of the local zoning board on whether or not they chose to choose to grant a variance for setback." The department does not have a, setback, a set standard for setback. We honor the local code and or any variance. I cannot move forward on my review until the setback issue is resolved so a realistic site plan can be developed. So, and, and that, that's the same letter that I'm looking at here as well. So, so my read of that at least, and again, well, I, I apologize, I understand that I'm coming into this process after there's been discussion and after it's been gone through, but my read of that was that it was really the, the department saying to this board, um, you're free to make your decision, we'll honor your decision on the variance. If you grant the variance, then we'll, we'll go on from there. With, with DOT, yes. Right. Also, but he was saying he couldn't. You have the county letter in your file here. The what letter? The county recommendation letter. No. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Yeah, yeah. Well, the county recommendation letter is there. Maybe we should just put this on the agenda for next month because I'm going to have to get everything in order first and maybe have to have one of you guys come in the office and help me put together everything that's pertinent to this matter. Okay. Because the, the, county, the county put us in an unusual situation. This, this all began before my time here. I've only come into this last June, so. I've known Mr. Higley for a long time, but... And you know more about it than I do, because it certainly <laughs> came, began before my time representing Mr. Higley. Yeah. 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 Yeah
this yeah, whole thing. So, um, so I'm really not familiar with, I mean, anything that happened prior to the board saying that they needed something from the DOT. Um, because really, I only came in at the end to, uh, to this. So. And then the other thing that just, um, I mean, I, if you have a copy of the letter from the Ulster County Planning Board, uh, I'd certainly appreciate a copy of it. What I've gotten from the Ulster County Planning Board was a recommendation that they made to this board, um, which I, I don't have a paper Take copy of card. here. Can you give me your email and yeah. your phone number and all that? And I can certainly do that. We can touch base yeah. tomorrow. Because what I saw from the Ulster County Planning Board, to me, was phrased as a, as a recommendation, but again, that was... No, it was, it was more specific. And I mean, I, again, I'm, you know, it's, it's, it's a while ago, but... The, the, they actually put us in a situation where they wanted us to go into the site plan review, which uh, that's, I, I don't know the legalities. Ralph, at that point in time, was supposed to check with the Association of Towns. He's not here, so I can't say whether he did or whether he didn't, right. to find out if, they, if the county could actually make us go into the site plan review, which is a planning board issue. Right, and so, I may have been looking at a different document from the Ulster County Planning Board than the than you folks received also. So, um, you know, again, I apologize for, for us popping up and not being on the agenda, but I do appreciate the board being willing to at least uh, put it on the agenda for next, is it next month at the, yeah, the next meeting? Yeah, um, I can tell you it's going to be um, April 15th at 7.30. So, Tracy, I have a question as a new member. Are, are these um, video documents archived anywhere? Um, in my office, <laughs> um, no. They're put on. Well, they're put on YouTube, and then the town clerk has a copy, and I have a copy um, of only the planning. The let me start over. The planning. There's three meetings through building and zoning planning that are recorded. There's the planning board workshop meeting the regular planning board meeting, and the zoning board meeting, okay? The planning board workshop meeting is not televised, okay, and, and, and it's not put online either. That's only, Stuart, a copy, it's only kept in my office um, for the board's reference. Um, the regular planning board meeting and the regular zoning board meeting are televised live the night that the meetings are held. Right. They are then um, a copy is provided to the town clerk mm -hmm. for uh, her files. A copy goes to my office for our files, and um, they're usually posted to YouTube in about two or three days after mm -hmm. the meeting. Okay, so they are archived. So, so the right, yes. question will, will So, be with the town yeah. clerk and with my office, yes. Okay. Thank you. But I didn't know if you meant someplace other than here. Hope the place doesn't burn down. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know if they stay on YouTube for for more than a few days? Oh yeah, okay. they're I mean they're ones that are on there since before I was here. Okay. So you um they're put in I think it's by the be by the date first. If you just type in Shandaken ZBA and whatever the date is that you're looking like if you were looking for tonight, it would be Shandaken ZBA and then it would be uh, three dash. 18-15. So it's it's that's the format. I might have it backwards, but that's the general format. So okay. if you type in Shindig and Planning Board, Shindig and CBA, you'll get them, and then that'll lead you to. Okay, thank you. Sure, yeah, but I know that one for sure is on on that. And um, you know, hopefully by the next meeting, that gives the board enough time. But if there if there is information that um, that was that was required that. Mr. Higley and Hanover Farms can provide, we're certainly willing to do that. Uh, but if it turns out that there was uh, a misunderstanding between DOT and, and, and who, who had to take the next step and, and what information was requi required, um, we would appreciate an opportunity to revisit that just so we could try and move the process forward. Well, I think that what the board has to do first is, and, and if I'm talking at one, then by all means, please tell me. But I think that what the board needs to do first is you know honor the request to be put on the agenda to be heard, but they need to actually speak with the attorney as far as reopening the matter, because we have municipal laws and state laws that we have to follow, and I think that it would be in the board's best interest 
to at least reach out to the attorney and and see if you know that's something that we should be doing. Okay. Just well, to protect the town and the board, you know. Well, if, the, if we could be put on the, the agenda for the next meeting to make the formal request to have the this application restored to the to the board's consideration. In the meantime, then I, I can speak to the clerk's office and um, and get the information that, that I don't have in my file, but. Yeah, I, mean, I think that like between now and April, it'll give us time. Be, you know, because I, if, if they're okay with that, I'm happy to, uh, you know, consult with the attorney and, and see how to handle this. So I don't think that we should go into this with any promises of um, any promises of restoring the application. I think that we should just <coughs> move forward with the idea that you know we'll put you on the agenda for next month. And in the meantime, we'll look into it and see where we're going to be at that point. Okay. So, sure. to be clear, is it your intention to restore the application? Do you agree with that? Yeah, we, we would yeah. like to restore the application. Um, yeah, there's, there's, there's a possibility that it can happen, although I'm not, I, I, I know that we've had issues before where there was, where there was misunderstanding, <laughs> uh, lack of information in this body. It's, it's a possibility that you can reopen the application. I don't know that we legally can because the public, the last decision was made to, to deny the application. Well, so there's a time frame after the close of the, the public. Well, I think, there's, I think there's three years. <laughs> there's quite, there's quite a span of time to, to be able to. No, after the close of the <coughs> public hearing, it's like 45 or 60 days. Well, yeah, the but there's, 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 there's other Oh, you mean the application? Okay, I gotcha. To, uh, okay. to, to revisit the application. I think the intention here is ra rather than, you know, rather than going through the expensive and the burdensome process of an appeal, uh, if that was even, if there was even time to do that, yeah. um, th that's not the issue. If there was a misunderstanding about what information this board required, what information the DOT required, and um, and and what should have been the next step with the application. Um, as, as the chairman mentioned, if there's if there there is a misunderstanding or if there's something that could have been easily remedied, um, we, we would rather just come back to this board and try and continue to move the process forward rather than litigating the issue on an appeal and uh, and taking the time the town's time and resources that way. Um, at least from from my review of what Mr. Higley provided to me, it seemed like there was just a disconnect. Um, and if that's not the case, then then I I think we'll certainly see that in the next month. But um, we would just appreciate the chance to come back next month and and if and show that maybe there was a disconnect and ask that the board formally uh, restore the application to the calendar. Yeah, right. We'll, we'll check in the meantime with the, with the calendar and make sure that we're not stepping, you know, not, back, not beating ourselves in the face and, and doing something which is going to come back to haunt both of us. Sure. Uh, I, I don't have a problem with, with listening to the listening to what you have. And, uh, looking back into it, even if you have to reapply, it would be a Maybe a situation where we just, you know, the simplest thing maybe to reapply. I don't know. Uh, I can, I, um, I, 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 if you want, I can. I know that um, you can't, but I can provide you copies. But if you want, what I'll do is um, I'll email the information to the attorney, and then this way I can copy everyone else on the attorney's response. I may talk to a different attorney. Okay. But you well, yeah. Sure. I'm, not, I'm, you know, I'm, just, I'm just saying it may not be that maybe send it to a different different voice. But anyway, yeah, I, I don't have a problem with, with having you come back next week. Well, Thank I you. have the um, the attorney that's on the um, the the attorney that the planning board has working on the resort project. But this is a general question. He doesn't need the case information. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I can just ask him. Yeah. You know, as a matter of you know, just to make the well, inquiry. Into the office, we'll, 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 we'll do something together, maybe. Okay. But Mr. Wilner, your, your issue is basically procedural. There's no new germane information. No, it, it, the, the issue is procedural. What what can we do to restore this to the calendar so we can finish the application process so the board can then uh, make its decision? And um, and I, I would just ask if there is, you know, I'm, I'm certainly not asking you to tell me what your lawyer's advice was when when you consult with your with the, the board's attorney, but if there seems like there's some procedural roadblock that just prevents the existing application from being restored, if there was some sort of a misunderstanding uh, that that led to the vote at that October meeting, 
um, please let me know before the before the meeting, and, and Mr. Haley and I can also talk about submitting a new application then if that's what we need to do, rather than taking the board's time. Um, I mean, if it's, a, if it's a question that needs to be discussed at the meeting, we're, we'd certainly like to come and do that. If it's a clear cut, there's no way to restore anything to the calendar, then um, please let me know so we can we can come prepared to the meeting and not waste the board's time. Sure. And now, please refresh my memory. Was that last October or the October before last? 2014. 2014. October. That's right. October 15th, I believe, 2014. Yeah. And I'll, I'll be happy to provide my contact information to the clerk after the meeting. Great. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you. <laughs> you said you had some. You had something about you wanted to amend on the minutes. Uh, yes, there, there was an inaccuracy in the minutes, if I may, Tracy, on the uh, roll call vote for uh, for Mr. Cassano. Although you tell it four votes, he only had three listed because Wait, he hang on, the what? On, on the minutes from the last meeting, February 18th, second page, roll call vote. Oh, you know why? Because I was using one of the other ones. I was using, um, I was just typing into a previous set. So I just copied and pasted that over, but I see what you're saying. Okay. So yeah, that's not a big deal. No, I'm suggesting the best case of accuracy. Well, there's actually going to be a notation in the bottom of this that I, um, have put into the planning board once because I was doing very long and detailed um, minutes and the um, town clerk and I had this discussion and she said that moving forward because everything is um, video documented that it wouldn't be necessary to do that so that I should shorten them to save myself time because this is time consuming and there's not enough time in a day. Um, and then just, you know, so that's what I did. I mean, I have more planning board meetings than I do zoning board meetings. So I've shortened them and then put a notation in there that, you know, that all of the minutes are filed and stored with the clerk's office, my office, and then, you know, they can also be viewed on YouTube if there's any question, right. you know, or if anybody needs any further details. Right. Well, this is a time issue for us, too, so I... Well, when you there. said an amendment, I thought, <laughs> I didn't expect you. That's enough. That's just a typo, Mark. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I stand amended. I thought I put like the wrong person in there or something. Ah, that was off by one. I stand amended. <laughs> right, so I think that's it. Um, everybody got the training flyer packets. I did send out a. There's two separate trainings? There's three separate trainings. And then on the first one, the one from Brent Gosh from the watershed that first notice that I got, there was no time in there. So I called him and he hadn't realized that he hadn't put the times in. So I wrote him on a sticky note, attached it to the bottom so that you could see what time the classes are. Um, and then there was two other ones also. Now if you go to this one on April 16th, this will count for four and a half hours of training credit and you'll have all your training time in for the year if you attend this one. There is a ten dollar fee, but um, the, you know I can put a voucher in um, for it. No, this isn't the one for the Hannah. The Hannah's a two day one. This is the annual 